The degree of civilization in a society can be judged by entering its prisons. Dostoevsky said that, and he spent four years in a Russian prison camp in Siberia with his hands and feet bound the whole time, so he knew what he was talking about. Unlike Dostoevsky, most of us never enter prisons to see what the conditions are on the inside. Groups of activist inmates are trying to change that, however, with a nationwide call for prison strikes over what they describe as the inhumane and unconstitutional working conditions inmates face in the U.S. prisons. Today, there are around 2.4 million prisoners in the U.S. and roughly 900,000 of them work. While most of this work is done within the prison itself or for the public sector, some private corporations take advantage of the incredibly cheaper free labor that prisons offer. Corporations like Walmart, Whole Foods, and Victoria's Secret get tax breaks to take advantage of prisoners who work eight hours a day without union representation and who make between 23 cents to $1.15 per hour. That's over six times less than the federal minimum wage. So technically, a prisoner making the McDonald's uniforms earns less than the person wearing it. Now, advocates for prison labor claim that these work programs teach prisoners invaluable work skills and allow them to earn a higher wage than other prison jobs while offsetting the cost of housing for inmates. The fact that a few giant corporations get to save millions of dollars in labor costs by paying inmate workers virtual slave wages, that's just a lucky coincidence. Well, according to the Free Alabama Movement, one of the groups leading the organized prison strike, Prison labor is, in fact, just a modern form of slavery that's only allowable because of the working of the 13th Amendment. In a public statement calling for the strike, the group said the following, Prisoners are forced to work for little or no pay. That is slavery. The 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution maintains a legal exception for continued slavery in U.S. prisons. It states, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States. Now, overseers, watch over our every move, and if we do not perform our appointed task to the liking, we are punished. They may have replaced the whip with pepper spray, but many of the other torments remain. Isolation, restraint positions, stripping of our clothes, and investigating our bodies as though we are animals. This strike, which was planned to coincide with the 45th anniversary of the legendary Attica prison riots of 1971, is already underway at other prisons in Florida, South Carolina, and Texas. And organizers hope the labor action will spread the 20 more. They hope to demonstrate that without prison labor, many U.S. prisons simply will essentially cease to function. The inmates say that they are not only fighting for higher wages, but also to challenge the policy of mass incarceration that has led to decades of skyrocketing imprisonment rates. Now, conditions in America's overcrowded and overly punitive prisons should be a scandal. And not just because so many inmates are compelled to work for practically no pay and subject to excessive punishments, all often in the service to the bottom line of major corporations. Dostoevsky was right. As a society, we do deserve to be judged based on how we treat our prisoners. But to make that judgment, we first have to acknowledge the reality of life inside those prison walls. These brave inmates currently going on strike for improved conditions are demanding that their voices be heard. But the question remains whether the rest of us are ready to listen. I'm Hassan Piker and this is The Breakdown.